Welcome into the three show, everyone. I'm Vinny Paraselli. We've had a big last couple of weeks in the NA3HL. Let's start with the biggest news. Not one, but two former NA3HL players have made NCAA Division I commitments. Former Peoria Mustangs forward Dylan Bentley has announced his commitment to UMass Lowell. Bentley was a leading scorer for the Mustangs in his lone season in 2019-20. His 30 goals and 55 points came in just 46 games played. He went on to the New Mexico Ice Bowl where he currently leads the team in scoring with 27 points in 26 games. Former North Isle Bulls defenseman Campbell Chaikos has also made a Division I commitment. He'll be going to Minnesota State Mankato to play his college hockey. In his first appearance in the NA3HL, the Blue Runner had 7 points in 15 games, then played the entire 2021 season with the Bulls. He had 3 goals and 17 points in the regular season before adding 2 more assists in the postseason as he helped the Bulls win their 4th Frazier Cup championship in team history. He currently plays for the Anchorage Wolverines in the North American Hockey League and has 3 goals and 15 points in 24 contests. The top goaltender in the league is getting called up to the NAHL. Matthew Smith is getting called up to the Minnesota Wilderness. Smith is 11-0 so far this season for the Granite City Lumberjacks, sporting a league-leading 109 goals against average and four shutouts. He also ranks in the top five in save percentage with a 942. The NA3HL showcase just wrapped up last week and it was a West Division domination. The six teams combined to go 17-1 over the three-day event with Granite City, Mason City, Wilmer, Alexandria, and Minnesota all going 3-0. The Warhawks won all their games via a shutout using three different goaltenders to do it. The Danbury Junior Hattricks also went 3-0 at the event while Sheridan and Atlanta each went 2-0-1 to pick up five points at the three-day showcase. NHL President and Commissioner Mark Frankfeld spoke about how important the event was after not being able to be held in 2020 due to COVID-19. Yeah, we took the year off last year because of COVID, so this is the first time we got to meet as a with a, with a board meeting and with all the teams in one place. One of the things that's really cool about this is you mentioned the geography. We're, you know, we're pretty spread out with the divisions. They don't get a chance to play teams in, in other divisions. What we do with this event is the top teams in each division play the other top teams in each division and so on. So not only do you get to see the best teams, the top teams in each division compete against the other teams, the teams that struggle a little bit sometimes in the division, they get to come here and play some really even competition. So it's really good for competition. It's really good for development. And we've got you know, dozens of scouts here. Division three, Division one, NAHL, which is pretty important for these guys at this time frame, and a lot of ACHA guys too. So there's just under 100 scouts here right now. A lot of hockey going on. A lot of young guys having a lot of fun coming to Blaine, Minnesota to play hockey, which is something we regularly do and do a really good job of. So. The NA3HL Showcase marks the halfway point of the season for most teams. Let's take a look at the standings. The Rochester Grizzlies lead the Central Division over the Oregon Tradesmen. It appears Oregon and Peoria will be destined for a first-round playoff matchup unless there's some movement there. The Cyclones are clinging on to the final playoff spot as Milwaukee is right behind them, while the Junior Blues are in the basement of the Central. The Northeast Generals saw their perfect season come to an end, but they still have a 12-point lead over the Long Beach Sharks. As we said, Danbury was perfect at the event. They jump into third place over New Jersey. Bay State and Norwich have some work to do if they want to keep their postseason chances alive. In the Frontier Division, we saw Helena lose their first two games of the season. Gillette is right on their heels with just a three-point gap between the two clubs. Bozeman and Great Falls control the other two playoff spots at the moment, but Badlands and Butte could easily make a second-half push and get right back into it. Yellowstone and Sheridan have some work to do if they want to get back into the playoff race. In the South Division, the Brahmas went 0-3 in Minnesota, potentially opening the door for the Roadrunners. They are just six points back with three games in hand. Both teams have won seven of their last ten. El Paso sits in third while Louisiana is holding on to the final playoff spot. Oklahoma City has games in hand and is just one point back of the Drillers. Mid Cities is in sixth. Atlanta is in seventh. And the expansion Austin Ice Bats are currently in eighth. In the West, the hottest and arguably the best team in the league has won 22 straight games. The Granite City Lumberjacks have 52 points, an 11-point lead over defending Fraser Cup champion Mason City. Wilmer looked real good at the showcase. They are in third, with Alexandria in fourth. New Ulm was the only West Division team to lose in Blaine. They are in fifth, and Minnesota enjoyed some success in the showcase. They are on a three-game winning streak. That will get you caught up on all the action in the NA3HL for now. We'll be back in studio next week. Until then, have a safe and happy New Year's, and we'll see you in 2022.